Malcolm had her triplets. Lemon got squoze in the press. Party line broke the story before I could get the seed scraped off of the type. What happened to call for an extra? Oh, the army's moving into the valley. What army? The U.S. one. What for? You ever see such a mess? The big letters are mixed in with the little ones and the pica type Sam. is all. Hmm? What's the army moving into the valley for? Uh, well, if I tell you, you promise not to say nothing until I get this story sorted and set again. Yeah, I promise. I don't know how long it's going to take me with a mess like this. Sam. Huh? Oh, but they're having war games or something. The Green Army against the Blue Army. By this time, there's soldiers swarming all over the valley. Where in the valley? Well, the general said a lot of the fighting's going to take place around the Shady Rest. Bye. <laughs> Back to the hotel. I left the girls swimming in the water tank. Well, there's nothing to worry about. No. With the girls swimming and the soldiers swarming? Thank goodness the train's still here. What does that sign mean? Oh, that means the train's been make-believe blowed up. You can't use it. But I got to. The girls are swimming in the... Kate, there is nothing to worry about. Now, I was a doughboy in World War I, and we were walking by this pond, and these girls were swimming. <laughs> Kate, if I was you, I'd start walking. <laughs> Running. Hey, you got any idea where we are, Hank? So I think that we're. I'll tell you where you are. I'm in charge of this patrol ever since Lieutenant got captured. I outrank you guys. Private first class. Hey, we have to salute him? Okay, sir, where are we? <laughs> We're lost. One of us is going to have to take these binoculars and climb one of these big trees and take a look around. <laughs> Should sure, we give you a boost, sir? <laughs> and you rub it on my back. <laughs> I've got a feeling we're being watched. Hey, what's so interesting over there? Hey, that's a property of the U.S. Army. In Japan. <laughs> wow! Any what is like uh, advance and capture? I thought we were supposed to be fighting the Green Army. You fight him. We'll meet you later. <laughs> ah! Oh, don't move. Should we search him? What for? Concealed weapons. They aren't concealing anything. Yeah. What are you boys doing around here? Oh, we're a Blue Army patrol. I'm the commanding officer, Private First Class Hank Benton. Oh, this is Todd Langwell and Stu Howard. Hi. 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 Sorry, girls, but uh, you're prisoners of war. Yeah, we'll uh, have to get your name, rank, and telephone number. <laughs> hey, uh, anybody else around here? Just me. <laughs> is that gun loaded, ma'am? You care to find out? <laughs> no, ma'am. We're just looking over the terrain, ma'am. Oh. Well, you've seen enough of the terrain to be able to draw it from memory. <laughs> Girls, get in the hotel and put on some clothes. Oh, but, Mom, we're prisoners of war. 
Well, that's right, ma'am. We've captured this hotel. Oh, how could you capture the hotel when I've captured you? Well, you see, the way these war games work, ma'am, is that we have three guns and you only have one. Therefore, we have superior firepower. Oh, which means you're captured. Come on, girls. Hold it. Oh, Mom, you don't want these poor boys to get into any trouble, do you? You've got to play according to the rules, ma'am. Well, that's all right. As long as they're my rules, understand? That's all right with us, ma'am. Good. Then let's go into the hotel and talk about the surrender terms over a glass of lemonade. Hey, yeah. oh, come, on, come on, prisoners. Oh, boy. <laughs> I still don't understand how you play these war games. Well, they split us into two armies. Now, this is the blue one, and this is the green one. And we're trying to take the valley from the green army. That reminds me of when I was in the big war. Oh, the Spanish-American War. <laughs> World War One. Now, there was a war. There's none of this push-button stuff. We were in a trench right here. The enemy was in a trench there. Sometimes we wouldn't be more than 25 feet apart. I remember one morning looking across no man's land, watching a feller do his laundry. It was a very clean war. <laughs> More pie, anybody? There's nothing clean about it. First two months I was in the army, I was standing in mud so deep I couldn't even move. Six transports sailed for France before they could get him out. <laughs> More pie, Hank? Oh, no, thank you. Kate, I didn't get all them medals of mine by gold breaking at Camp Yap, Hank. Oh, well, what camp did you get him for gold bricking at? <laughs> More pie, Doc. Now, you can laugh, but I was decorated personal by Black Jack himself. Hey, General Pershing? No, 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 Black Jack Kobe. He ran the 21 game in the rest area. <laughs> How about you, Stu? Uh, no, thanks, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, well, you boys can take this with you when you decide to move on. Oh, uh, we weren't figuring on moving on. Well, we thought we'd set up an observation post right here. Best place to do any observing around here is on Spoon and Rock. You see the whole valley. Spoon and Rock? Well, why don't we all go up and take a look at it? And, you know, up can now. As you were. If there's any co-ed observing to be done, it's going to be done in the lobby. Oh, but Mrs. Bradley. My rules, remember? <laughs> Uncle Jill, I'm going to need your help. You're not putting me on KP. It's more like, um, guard duty. So I slowly crawled through the enemy lines until I come to this barbed wire. So I crawled under it. Well, maybe I climbed over it. Anyway, I got a medal for that act of bravery. Gosh. You sure got a lot of medals, didn't you, Mr. Carson? Oh, well, I... Uh, maybe Mr. Carson would show them to you. Oh, no, uh... Mr. Carson's much too modest to show us his decorations. No, I ain't. Wait right here. for you, General. How can I get to the Shady Rest Hotel? Yeah, by train ordinarily, but the cannonball's been make-believe blowed up. I know, my troops destroyed it. There's a road, but that's been blowed up too. That wasn't part of my battle plan. Yeah, it wasn't part of the county road department's plan either. They didn't figure on Luke Seller dropping that dynamite. He could walk the tracks. I've got a Jeep. Uh, that'd be a mighty rough road over them ties. Of course, it wouldn't be as rough as riding in the cannonball. <laughs> Right in there. Sergeant Carson reporting. Aren't you a little early for trick or treating? Don't you remember, Kate? Old Army uniform. What old army had uniforms like that? AEF. Oh. I never noticed those medals before. 
Well, I was never a man to brag about my war record. Yeah, I could understand that. You know what this is? That's a crocs de Gary, given to me by a French general. Isn't that an iron cross? No. The fellow that sold it to me said, I mean, I got medals from all nationalities of generals. Uh, how come you put your uniform on? Show them doubting GIs my hardware. Oh. Say, you ain't seen them and the girls, have you? I thought you were keeping an eye on them. They must have ducked out when I was up changing. You know, if this was a war, you could be shot for deserting your post and you might be at that. <laughs> we gotta look for them. Well, they couldn't have gone far. The question is, where did they go? Now, we gotta split our forces. Um, you, you, you take the water tower, you take the woods, <laughs> and I'll reconnoiter Spoon and Rock. <laughs> Billy Joe, when you're a soldier, you've got to take love where you can find it. Because there may never be a tomorrow. Oh, I love that picture. What picture? The one that that speech came from. <laughs> well, now that we're alone. Hello, everybody. Now that we're not alone. <laughs> Bobby Joe, when you're a soldier, you have to take love where you find it. Because there may never be a tomorrow. You're reading my mind. No, I saw that movie with Billy Joe. <laughs> Bobby. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. I'm on your side, son. I know how it is when you're a soldier. You gotta take love where you find it, for there may never be no tomorrow. Sergeant Carson, I saw that picture. Silent version of the remake. <laughs> There's something coming down the track. I think it's a Jeep. Holy smoke. What do those two stars mean? That means it belongs to a, a general. Come on, we gotta warn the guard. <laughs> Sounds like you had a blowout. What outfit you with, Mac? Mac? I'm General Patterson. General? General? Sergeant Carson, sir. What are you dressed for? First World War. That's over. Isn't that the Iron Cross? I'm sorry to tell you this, but your side didn't win. <laughs> Betty Joan, Bobby Joe. How do you do, sir? Hello, sir. Sir. Miss Bradley, it's a lucky thing none of my men have found this spot. It'd make a wonderful place for goofing off. <laughs> oh, I don't think your men would ever do a thing like that. <laughs> I wonder if it would be all right with you if I established my headquarters here. Sure, well, or make yourself at home. If you'd like to leave your gear in one of the rooms, just help yourself. What's the matter, Kate? We've got plenty of room. There ain't nobody here. <laughs> uh, well, there isn't anybody here, is there? No, well, uh... What was that? What was what? Whoever you are, come down with your hands in the air. Hey. Uh, 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 there are sisters. I thought you only had three daughters. Uh, three, uh, uh, three downstairs and three upstairs. Uh, uh, this is uh, Hanky Joe, uh, Chotty Joe, and Stewie Joe. Do your upstairs daughters always wear army shoes? Some of your men were kind enough to give them to us poor civilians. How nice. Get shut! Well. 
As commander of the Green Army, may I say I'm very proud of you. Thank you, General, but we're in the Blue Army. What? <laughs> Looks like you've been captured, General. Now, see here. According to the rules of your war, the boys explained to me, a soldier is a prisoner when he meets a superior force of arms. That's the rule, sir. Very well, men. <laughs> You're a prisoner. How about that, Toddy Joe? We captured ourselves a general. <laughs> They made me a lot of promises. But this is the first one that came true. <laughs> Are you sure it's all right for you to be doing this? Feels all right to me, baby. <laughs> Shouldn't somebody be out on guard duty? Oh, that there's all fixed. on the borderline, but you might as well join them and keep them company. you guys, you're prisoners. What do you mean? We outnumber you. You're our prisoners. Where are your weapons? Well, we, uh... Hey, fellas, Mom's got some more of the... We surrender. <laughs> Wait a second. We're not taking any prisoners. Get lost. You got it. Those are the rules. <laughs> but, but, we're not armed. Neither are we. <laughs> Hello, baby. My name's Jack Bevins. As you were, Mac. We were here first. All I was going to do was give her my name, rank, and serial number. Well, two more for donuts. This way, boys. <laughs> Hold it. But, Mrs. Braley, they, they... When you are a soldier, you got to take love where you find it. <laughs> Coordinate 276D. That's D for donuts. And 896G for girls. Yeah, the Shady Rest Hotel. The password is surrender. <laughs> Man, this is the most. They got donuts, lemonade, girls. That's G for girls, I for indubitably, R for ravishing, L for lovely, and S for, for surrender. <laughs> Best food you ever tasted. Yeah, and girls. Rifles over there and pack. <laughs> Rifles over there and parachutes over there. <laughs> Where did you... 
Julia. Come on. What? Mrs. Bradley, I've had enough of this. You have turned these war games into a USO hootenanny. <laughs> as far as those three... Uh-uh, be careful, General. Well, when I get through with them, they'll be raking rocks for the next 50 years in Leavenworth. All they did was capture you. Well, if they hadn't been goofing off here, this never would have happened. I'm going to court-martial them. Oh, I wouldn't do that, General. Miss Bradley, I happen to be a general of the United States Army. Nobody tells me what to do. Well, all right. But... When those three testify that you were doing KP in a lace apron, it's going to get a lot of laughs around the Pentagon. <laughs> Try to keep up, Mrs. <laughs> ever get in a similar situation, remember to use my strategy. You mean like falling asleep on guard duty? Well, I wasn't asleep. I was just faking. Get them green army guys to sneak past me and surrender. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. Mademoiselle from Armand Tears, Harley Blue. Mademoiselle from Armand Well, Billy Joe, this is it. We're shoving off. Bobby, when duty calls, a man must answer. Haven't you got anything to say, Stu? No, I didn't see that picture. <laughs> well, this is goodbye. Addies. What do you want to do? Lose your good conduct medals. Good conduct medals? Did the general give you those? No, I did. Oh. Well, thanks, Mrs. Bradley. Let's move out, men. Thanks for all the good food. Oh, you're welcome. Please come back and see us again. So Anytime you're around, you are around. You're Mademoiselle from Armistice. Don't forget your right. Mademoiselle from Armistice. Well, that's the way it is, girls. The men go marching off to battle. And the women stay behind. Why? Somebody has to clean up the mess they left. <laughs> Sarah, up on the double forward march. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.